but yeah, let's look at some toys. Let's look at some toys. Uh, so we were at the Columbus Toy and Doll Show, I think it might have been called. Okay. But really nice place, really cool people, huge, huge, huge. place at the uh, Ohio State Fairground buildings. Um, and there were two people that recognized me. Oh. Um, not one, your brother. No, not my brother. My brother oh. went and his, and his boys went. But there were two people... And I saw it was fun. One guy was like, oh, yeah, Blind Wave, Wave Squadron. I watched that. Cool. Okay. <laughs> and he sold Star Wars toys. So oh, I that's really definitely cool. made sure I bought one or two from him. Um, and then <laughs> when we were checking into our hotel, because we stayed the weekend up there, mm-hmm. checking our hotel, the guy checking us in the entire time was like, all right, here, do this and do this. And we had our, uh, Obi with us. He was like, here, do this pet thing and that type of thing. And then at the very end, he kind of looks at me and I'm like, I'm like, and he goes, I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> you, he he like, whispered it to yeah, you? You're on YouTube, right? He's like, I watch you all the time. And then the guy that was the bellboy, or I'm, I'm not sure what you call them, mm-hmm. was there too and heard him. He was like, how do you know him? <laughs> <laughs> who, who is he? Oh, he's on YouTube. He's like, you got a YouTube channel? What is it? Everyone was like whispering. <laughs> anyway, well, it was really funny. It was fun slash like this the tiniest bit like, that's okay. I think it's okay, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's yeah. funny. I wonder why he whispered it. Yeah, it was just funny to me that the entire time he knew who I was, and I, he, he, I didn't know that. Sure, so, yeah, he was just doing his job. Yeah, and then like, oh, thank God, I was just being nice today. By the way, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's like if you were like making pizzas and yeah, George, I'm not saying George, I'm not. And George Lucas came in exactly. Yeah, like, I got to make my pizza. Yeah, you're like, by the way, here's an extra pizza. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And when I say nice, I don't even mean like uh, my attitude or anything. Like sometimes I try to hear more than. Like, like, I don't hear as well as I do sometimes. Sure. Sometimes I'm not sure. paying attention, and it takes a lot of effort to pay attention. Sometimes I just don't take that effort. Sure. So I was glad that I was paying attention to him. <laughs> sure. Because he could have been like, oh, so I know you. I'm like, uh-huh, yeah, see ya, you know? Well, that's true, too. Yeah. But maybe that's why, like, you whisper it, because then you're like, you mm-hmm. got to pay attention to a whisper, right? you got to pay attention to a whisper, maybe. Yeah. All right, well, let's right. look into okay. these toys that We're you're talking about here. We're into some toys. <clears throat> now... I don't even know how many you got or what oh, you I have. have. A decent amount. How We're big just it gonna is. go through some of these relatively quickly. Um, but I actually quite like this line. This is just like the Star Wars Saga collection, and uh, up here in this corner, you can always tell what movie it's from, which I always thought was a cool okay. thing. So this is from A New Hope. This is him, Dazon, who is a Cantina alien. I don't know hmm. if you remember him. His head kind of like pops up in one shot, but uh, that's him. This is also a great way to yeah. remember trivia, because that was the only way. I didn't have the books and like, the visual mm-hmm. galleries when I was young, young. I only had the, the action figures. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. So that's him. We oh, also it comes with a little hologram figure on the back. It totally does. It's like a As, red, red stormtrooper. You got a red stormtrooper. This one has a red, uh, looks like an Obi Wan, but this is a clone trooper sergeant. So phase one armor, clone trooper sergeant. Okay, cool to have. Whenever I can find a uh, a clone that I don't have, yeah. it's a fun day, and there's a lot. There's a lot of variants. There's a lot of clones, a lot of variants. Okay. We really need to model it, model once. it once, and then they get to play around with it. So we got that. Um, we got another clone here. This is a, a 442nd Siege Battalion clone. So this is Phase 2. This would be on, like, Kashyyyk with Yoda. Okay, yeah. Right? So Episode 3. So we got one of those. Um I'm going through some of the smaller f- stuff first. We have a uh, stuff too. that uh, one looks older because the the plastic. Yeah, looks so yellow. this is the 30th anniversary. It still has the original Walmart six dollar. Uh, man, these these cost six dollars. That's a long time ago. Mm. This is a fan choice one. This is Zev Sineska, who so is one of the uh, Zeb Sineska. Zev, yes, Zev Sineska. Yep. Who's Zev. So he would be Rogue Two. This is Rogue Two. Uh, okay. Captain Solo. Commander Skywalker, that's Zev. Okay. So we got. I remember being younger, being like, "Oh, that's yeah. that's just Antilles." And then yeah. like later, I'm like, "That's no, that's that, ain't, not that ain't him. That's Rogue I don't know who This guy is. And because of this one, now I know his name. Mm. <laughs> so it's fun. That was a fan choice. So they used to do, and they still do sometimes, but they do like polls. What figure would you like? Here's figures we've never done before. Zev got uh, the 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 poll winner. He was the poll winner. Uh, for that one. Did they get shot down in Hoth? Then, um, wasn't he battling in Hoth and I'm Zeb does remember. battle, but I don't think he does. If he dies there, or not. I can't remember. Okay, yeah. Hmm. Um, but speaking of <sighs> people that did something and not all of them made it out, this Aaron is one, two, three, four, five of the Pod Racers. Ooh, cool. Collected. 
From so Toys ha- R Us. Yeah, from Toys R Us exclusive, baby. Yeah, I miss that. So who all is there? Okay, so we got Dud Bolts, Mars Guo, Klieg Holdfast, Gascano, and Team Toe Paragles. Huh. Yep. Let me see that. Gascano is probably the one you know about the most. He has the, the long arms. Four arms. Yeah. Klieg is the guy with like the crazy hair, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure who the alligator guy is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I'm Dead sure Bolt. the other two. Actually, I recognize this guy. Yeah. Huh. I think there's like, what, 18 racers in that race and, what, 20 or 12 of them finish? Something like that. There's not many. <laughs> there's not many. Dud but, Bolt. Yeah. What a name. Dud Bolt. So that's the alligator-looking guy. Mm-hmm. No, I, I recognize Mars as well from yeah. something because he just had, like, a dinosaur look about him. Well, he's a, uh, a Bodotten. Is he a Bodotten? Right? Isn't that Mars? Or am I wrong? I mean, he, isn't he the girl guy? He looks kind of. Bodot- he looks Bodotny. Yeah, I believe. I didn't. He is a bot Bodotten. I didn't realize. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I didn't know about Bodottens yeah. until Clone Wars. So early, if you remember so. Queenie and the Bodottens in the Jar Jar Mace Windu episode of Clone Wars, the Bodottens actually showed up in Episode One, and no one knew. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Huh? Interesting. Well, that's a fun one. I gotta find like the other collected like that because I have some pod racers uh, collected singularly, but I, I always like it whenever they do battle packs like that. Sure. Yeah. How many are there? 22? How many raced? I think it was like 18 to 20. 18? Oh, there was yeah. a lot. Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. Got to count the flags. Yep. This, is a, this is a fun <laughs> thing. Uh, I actually have both of these figures, and this is a weird part of my collection, but I don't have the blockbuster value includes two figures version. What? It's double-sided. This is the Darth Maul lightsaber of action figures, Aaron. So they gave you... <laughs> So you buy Sessi Tin, uh-huh. and you just also get a clone trooper. Yes. Hmm. Yep. Block. It was uh, value. definitely a like there's there's been various ways throughout the years of satisfying a certain fan called a uh, an army builder. Yeah. In that they will buy every clone trooper, every stormtrooper they find, so they can literally build an army in their collection. Sure. Like have them on yeah. a field and stuff. Do they have like a Foot Locker thing where you yeah. can like? I'm guessing there's something in the. Little I'm sure boxes. it's just extra. You know, another reason that I keep my stuff in the package is because you often lose all of your accessories, and sometimes they just give you a bunch more mm. because you lost a bunch. Here's another know? lightsaber, or different guns, yep. or or binoculars, or yep. I guess they're not called binoculars. But this is from the old uh, Saga Legends Legacy Collection series, so that's cool. Um, obviously, one of the one of my targets of stuff that I like to get is stuff that would have been on the shelf when I was younger, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but I never saw this on the shelf. So it was no, just a really yeah. cool find. I don't remember ever seeing anything yeah. like that where I had like a flip it over. There's another one. I have another one over in my collection that's kind of like this, but it actually opens up and you can see both of them at the same time and it hmm. closes. But this one that's neat. is not like that. All right, we're moving on. This, <laughs> I haven't, I don't have one of these. I do now. This is from episode three, Revenge of the Sith. It's a crab droid. Um, obviously, my mint and box tendencies don't do well with ones like this that you really should open it and put it together because you can't really tell it's a ca- crab droid yet. Sure. <laughs> but the huh. back you can. <laughs> that looks cool. Yeah. It would, like, if it could be in the box uh-huh. like that, that'd be sweet. But yeah, yeah. it's. It would take up so much more room. When I think of the crab droid, I, the first thing I think of is that one trooper like jumping on top of it, and shooting. shooting down. Yeah, in episode three. Yeah, that's that's the kind of thing you need to buy to put on the battlefield thing you were just talking about. Absolutely. Where you yeah. have like here's the droid army and yeah. the clone army, and they're coming up and battling. I actually do have a. It's like a secret hidden dream, because I, I again I don't open much, but if I were to ever open everything, like how awesome it would be to just build a giant diorama. With all the figures? Yeah. That'd be crazy. I, and, and if I did, I would definitely have a clone trooper on top of this thing. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> you'd have to make some different things, too, right? Yeah. Like, you'd have to have, like, a Naboo Theed kind of area where uh-huh. you can have, like, here's these this battle going on, yeah. right? And then you have, like, a Geonosis, like, here's a bunch of just sure. battle droids and clones. Yeah. And then you just work your way all the way up through to, like, Endor and stuff, you know? Yeah. And just keep going with that. That'd be kind of cool. Well, let's work our way up to the Battle of Hoth. And this is, I love this figure. It's giant, but it is General Riken. Huh. Carlos gets, Riken. Uh, but he gets his own, like, yeah, like. The glass computer thing. Yeah, like the glass computer thing. Exactly. I don't know what it's called. His Just console. a heads up display yeah. on a console. I'm not really know. sure. But I love when figures can include this. You know, this is not cheap, but this was back when Star Wars figures were flying off the shelf. So. I don't think I ever got anything that had something like that in it. Yeah. 
Like, that's cool. I don't ever remember having, like, a just a glass computer screen. It's kind of hard to play with, I feel like, right? Like, generally, sure. you want, like, a cannon mm-hmm. or something that you can integrate with your other action figures, whereas this is very much like, let's head back to headquarters. Hmm, the data doesn't look good. Sure, <laughs> you know? yeah. A little harder to play with. Or, you're, with. like, you're playing with, like, ATSTs yeah. and snow speeders, and then you go back to him, and you're like, watch out, they're coming around the end, you sure. know? And you're like, oh, okay, I got it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, General. You know, like that kind of thing. Definitely the biggest difference between being a younger fan and to being an adult fan that collects toys is like you don't look at things for their playability anymore, mm. just their uniqueness and what it means to you, you know? See, now so you're I really talking like about like, like in Pokemon where it's yeah. like there's cards you can collect that are really cool yeah. or there's cards you get because they're playable for like actual being in the deck. Exactly, exactly. Uh, we're still going. We have another clone commander. This is just clone commander. Uh, they don't have a specific name. But this clone specifically, um, I just really, really love the loadout and the color. It's very, like, dark black and white huh. stuff. It um, is very black and white, which is yeah. unusual. Yeah, and I believe this was made before the Clone Wars came out, too. So uh, that mm. ARC Trooper look was something that appeared before the Clone Wars uh, came hmm. out. That's pretty cool. Yeah. What's the uh, coin in there? Uh, let's see. Yeah, they have an exclusive collector coin. I mean, okay, different lines have different things. Collect all so yeah. many coins mm-hmm. kind of thing too, because I know like some of the newer things are buy these six action figures and get yeah. an extra action figure hidden sure. from all the you know inside of it. Do you remember episode one figures? They had that little like chip stand. Yeah, that you could I had you the, could stand it up with yeah. a figure on it. It was a figure holder, but it yeah. was also uh, audio. Uh, yeah. You had to have the uh, comlink. The comlink, yeah. And you put it over top of the comlink, uh-huh. and it would give you lines from the movie. That's one of my favorite like gags. Uh, Clone Wars figures, which we might have one or two, had like uh, playing cards. You can play like a little card game. Yeah. Um, and they That's still cool. do little things like that. Uh, some of them have like little film cells. I uh, remember film cells too. Mm-hmm. I had film cells for uh, the time that I was like collecting and getting action figures was around Episode One. So yeah. I was getting a lot of those com chip things, mm-hmm. and then I also was getting. Um, they were like the black, blue, green like card backs yeah. for like the older movies. Yep. And those had like little film things in them from yeah. like I don't Power know, from of the like, Force. Yeah. Power of the Force sounds right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this one's a bit newer in that it has uh, a three figures in it, and it's kind of based off the old vintage collection box as well. But we got Obi Wan Kenobi on a Tibby and Don station look, so his blue mm. look from the 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 game. I'm sorry, the show. The show. So these from, are all based from Obi-Wan Kenobi's show. Well, not all of them. Okay. Uh, this Purge Trooper with Phase 2 armor would be from Fallen Order. Oh. I believe. Huh. Um, and then we got... But actually, you know what? There was a Purge Trooper in uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi at one point. So I think it does work. Okay. Yeah. Either way. And Tika would be the uh, the Jawa that was at his cave. The one that he was, yeah, trading with and stuff. Yeah. So when it says Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi, it really means it. <laughs> I was wrong about that. <laughs> I was just like, oh, look at no. this trooper. All right. Uh, we have nothing small left. I'm just going to go through some of these quick. Okay. Uh, some of my favorite things to collect are comic collection stuff. So here from Dark Empire 2 is the returned Emperor Palpatine clone <laughs> and Luke Skywalker. The Palpatine clone. Huh? Yeah. That's uh, cool. Again, Somehow he returned a couple times because <laughs> oh, this is Dark mean. Empire 2. <laughs> so he had, but it happened before. Okay. Huh. Yeah. thought this would be a, a fun way to go over some legend stuff. <laughs> Dude, Luke looks interesting. He, in does, well, he has such a cloak, but also Palpatine has like this. Yeah. I don't know how to even describe it, but it's like a. Almost like a very, vampire yeah. uh, thing, right? Yeah. Well, Aaron, in Dark Empire, Luke falls to the dark side. Well, that's not good. Yeah. He actually tries to. Okay, obviously, the Emperor is super powerful. He can come back like this. I'm going to learn the dark side and use it against him, was Luke's plan. Hmm. And it didn't work out very well, but Leia came and helped him. Also, his, uh, his lightsaber is uh, a unique color. Yes, it is. It is blue. It's not red like I was expecting it to be. Uh, I can't remember if it's meant to be Luke's Episode Four lightsaber or not. I don't think so. I think he just has a lightsaber. Just has another lightsaber. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Uh, I won't crack it open, but it's a very stylized comic, Dark Empire. Definitely gets you that feeling of like, I don't know, mid '80s Watchmen feel almost a little bit. Okay. But I really love these because of the comic that's in them, and I now have a version of Star Wars Dark Empire Two Number One that's sealed. So. Cool. Don't have to back and board it. Good. Okay, there's that one. I got another one. 
This is uh, Star Wars Empire. I, uh, I actually am not familiar with these two characters, but it was so unique I had to uh, check it out. Hmm. These two characters are Lieutenant Judlin and Dina Sean, and they are Star Wars Empires, two female Imperial officers. Interesting. Um, and again, I'm not super familiar with these two characters, but I was so just kind of intrigued that I had to pick it up. I, you don't often get female Imperial officers in toy form. And there's um, a lightsaber here. And there's also a lightsaber there as well. So Interesting. I, that would be one that I would want to open up and check out, but I don't know those two. I hope this is interesting to people, by the way. <laughs> Star Wars Empire. Yeah. I just... Uh, uh, okay, we're going to go this one next. We're going to do a shout-out to one of our uh, Star Wars YouTubers out there, Kyle Katarn. Okay. But we're not talking about that Kyle Katarn. We're talking... About this Kyle Katarn with the uh, Yusvin Vong character. Kyle, oh, is that what the using Vong look like? Kyle was part of the New Jedi Order. I've I've heard a lot about him and I've read about stuff with him, yeah. but I've never actually seen a using Vong. Yeah. in any kind of format. It's uh, also my favorite Kyle Katarn figure that I've seen yet. That's pretty cool. The ones that I have are more Dark Forces, where that one and really feels more Jedi Outcast, Jedi Academy, Kyle Katarn. It's very Kanan like to me. Yeah. Yeah. And then the using Vong, I remember just having like they're a very organic race, mm-hmm. right? So like, they have an ampy staff, uh, I think is what it's that, called. Okay, that must be the big old staff. He's Which got there. it's a it's a staff that is actually an animal. It's more like a snake that mm. can it will crawl around your arm when you're not using it, but when you do use it, it can like harden out. You can do different things with it. It's very coded to like when Moses comes to Pharaoh and he throws down his staff and it turns into a snake, but then. The the Pharaoh's wizards come out and do the same thing. It's kind of it kind of feels almost biblical inspired as a weapon to hmm. me. Interesting. So, okay, but that's from Star, that's Star Wars Tales that has this in there. Uh, I haven't read this comic, but I have read the New Jedi Order, and I just love that Kyle Katarn is in there. So I'm gonna have to crack this open and read it at some point. Oh too. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last one with the comics, and obviously people are gonna recognize one of these guys. This is Grand Admiral Thrawn as he appeared. An heir to the Empire tie-in comics, uh, so he has his Yalis Armory. Yeah, the, I don't know how to say it. The don't lizard. ask me. Um, and then Talon Cardit, who uh, was a big player in the Legends version of the uh, Rebellion. Really? Yeah. Okay. So it's just cool to have that figure too. He uh, is part of many uh, Fantastic Legends books. So I'm glad that I was able because I have a couple of Thrawns, but I don't have a Talon. And also, it's just. Thrawn stuff is really cool right now. Um, it's it's cool also to... quite expensive, Thrawn stuff these days. <laughs> I bet, because yep. of having that uh, push. Absolutely. It's neat to have, uh, like, at this point when this came out, then it's just there were books and comics of these characters yeah. that they're doing. And I'm yeah. trying to think, like, I, don't, I, don't, I haven't looked, but have you seen any, like, High Republic figures or any of that kind of stuff yet? Um, not yet. Because, though... like, that's, that's currently, like, that yeah. is in the, uh, you know, comic and book yeah. form it has an acolyte will be the closest thing to mm-hmm. having some kind of high republic sure like character thing and i, I yeah. i'm sure they'll make action figures based on that they have released action figures or not released them but they released pictures of acolyte stuff yeah. but i get what you mean but like, like back here like yeah. at, at this time you didn't have more movies right you no. just had books and you had comics and that's what you had so to continue yeah. those lines going you had to pull from something and it's you know? extremely rare to get literature characters as action figures yeah. because guess what kids that watch Star Wars generally don't do. They don't read all that much. So they're not really playing with, oh, here's Mara Jade, you know? Sure. It's cool for us to know who Mara Jade is, but kids aren't going to go to the you know toy aisle and tell their like their mom, give me Mara Jade, you know? No, they want Luke and Leia and Han and the character, you know? So yeah. it's hard to get those characters produced, but when they do, it's something special. Yeah. So that's usually what I gravitate towards when I'm at a toy show, is the stuff like, oh, man, I never even knew this existed. This is so yeah. cool. And when I was a kid, I definitely would have bought it. I could. <laughs> I didn't really think about that then, but this is interesting because there's also uh, I have one of those comic ones. Uh-huh. I think at home somewhere. Maybe I brought it here, but it was a comic one, and I believe it had Prince Zizor and yep. Leia in it. Is who I think it was. Yes, and it was based around the Shadows of the Empire. Yeah, um, video game, but like Prince Zizor is kind of in that. Mm-hmm. But I remember having a Prince Zizor like, yeah. action figure back then. But I never really thought about it being like this isn't from the movies. This mm-hmm. is more from books or comics. Absolutely. Or, Maybe even video. Shadows games. the Empire really helped when it came to that because it was like really one of the first. Who's Dash Rendar? I yeah. don't know who that is, but it sold amazingly well. So that kind of opened the door for fan choices and some figures that, you know, 
if you really wanted to succeed in the toy business, you just do the popular characters over and over and over again. Yeah. If you want to please an uh, ever-aging group of people that have bought your stuff in the past, you make brand new stuff no one's ever seen before. Mm-hmm. And somewhere in the middle is profit. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I never had a Dash Rendar figure. Yeah. It was really cool. I don't even remember in the game or the book, but he had this thing that connected to like his back that it, he had like a rifle with him, but he could like swing it behind him on like an arm and it really? would go back. So that was really interesting. I remember him having a jet pack at one point, but I remember that. That's yeah. cool. Uh, this is recent, but I don't have it because I haven't been to Galaxy's Edge in quite some time. Uh, I When I went to Galaxy's Edge, I made sure to get all the exclusive stuff I could. But this one has come out since I've been there, and I fortunately saw it there at the show. So I thought, hey, I'm going to pick this up, and it's going to be a cool thing to show off. So this one actually opens up, and you can oh, see we creatures. have uh, a Minoc, a Porg, eh. a Bogling, hmm. and a Kawakian Monkey Lizard. Uh, two of them uh, colored the way one that you're usually used to, and the other one they a don't... lot more Clone Wars, Hondo Anaka, parrot-looking one. Sure, yeah. So. Some of that, I mean, I think there was some blue in the Mandalorian ones, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A Minoc and a Boggling, huh? Yeah. That's cool. And in the future, when we try to do something like this, if we, if you guys like it, we'll try to make sure we have ourselves like a really close-up camera or something, too, because the Boggling especially... I think is really cool. He's so small, but yeah. he's so cute. There's a Boggling that comes with the Cal Kestis so Black Series, which these are Black Series figures, but this one's slightly different. So it's just cool to have that exclusive, and I was really happy it was there, and the markup was not that bad. Good. So yeah, that's cool. Uh, All right, I got... It'd be great uh, there wasn't Porgs in it. Yeah. Maybe two Minox. <laughs> I got three more things here. The first one, I mean, who doesn't love Boga? There would be one. Boga. You know, this is you could classify this oh. as like almost like a vehicle, but it's not obviously yeah, it's a creature. Sure. But uh this is just a really cool box. Uh unfortunately one side of the box has faded in sunlight, so somebody had this on their shelf for a long time in direct sunlight. Like at which a is window why it looks some, that somewhere way. near a window. Whereas that one doesn't so much. So I mean, that does suck, but one, I'll just put it on the other side, and two, I will not have it in direct sunlight for that long. Yeah, sure. So anyway. That's a fun one. That's cool. I like the boga. Dude, that was, yeah. That would be – I, I would love to have that as a mount, just yeah. riding on a lizard. Yeah. Uh, another thing that I would like to ride is Zam Wessel's speeder. This is her uh, oh, Enviro yeah. speeder, right? This okay. is the atmosphere speeder that has the <clears throat> – you know, the guitar yeah. sound to it. And uh, I have the Anakin Obi-Wan speeder that I picked oh, up cool. uh, years ago and have never been able to find Zam's. Well, that's and sweet. at this place, I found Zams. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I love that. So I really like this one. It, uh, yeah, it, I don't think it includes any other figure. Sometimes they do. Sure, but it is blast apart. <laughs> oh, you can blast it. You apart? can blast it apart, which is kind of cool because it does crash. I yeah, suppose down does. there by the. Well, he stabs well. into the glass and yeah, or the the uh, shoot whatever steel. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's the last thing that I have today. This was a. Uh, gift for my wife, who also attended the toy show. She got me this uh, in celebration of our upcoming anniversary. Okay. Uh, which is May the 4th. Yes. <laughs> um, now, when I said earlier, like, I used, I like to collect things that were on the shelf when I was a kid, right? Mm. Now, this one is the 1980 Whoa. X-Wing. You'll notice it's marked Empire Strikes Back. The first version of this figure was 1978. And it has the just Star Wars. Just Star right? Wars. And then this one was also re-released for Empire Strikes Back. But it is an old yeah. uh, figure. Now, uh, I should say vehicle. This guy, you know, Jancy was the one that saw it. And he pointed out, he, you know, the box is open. But it, he, he has everything in it. It has every sticker. Nothing is missing. Yeah. Which is incredibly rare. Action figures not included. Yes. Everything else should be there. Yeah, but it's incredibly rare to get stuff like this. It's so such, it's, It looks so old. Yeah. You know, like yeah. the style of it. Yeah. Like, like I, I personally don't have nostalgia of seeing this on the, on the shelf, but what we know about uh, collecting at that time, you know, 1977 didn't even have figures. They no. sold a cardboard, you know, piece of crap in promise of figures later, and then they came out with three vehicles. They had a TIE Fighter, the Landspeeder, and the X-Wing. 
and the X Wing was the one that sold off the shelves. I'm sure, yeah. Um, so it's just kind of cool to have that piece of uh, well, especially because like they would have had the movie out, right? Yeah. Like you saw the movie, you went to go buy the action figures. Yeah. All you got were cardboard because you had to wait. And Absolutely. They were like, Promise we'll get it to you. Yeah. But the X Wing is what you'd want. That's what defeated the Death Star. Yep. You know, Luke Skywalker flew that thing. Yeah. And I don't even know if Jancy understands. <clears throat> what this means because it's awesome i had such a great feeling like putting it in my car after because it's great i'm putting the collection but i also have never really bought the old stuff yeah. because not only is it cool it's super collectible and it's super expensive so she might have kicked open a door that should not have been opened <laughs> well so she, thank you so much she i love that in the future <laughs> anyway that's my haul uh i just gives me unending pleasure to not just buy a thing and bring it home uh to go into a stall or somewhere i have no idea what's there and find something i love going behind the rack and looking through the stuff you know like i got yeah. that one got that one i don't have that one but that's not that cool oh i got this one you know uh jancy i'm sure was tired of it halfway through but she stuck sure. out the entire time with me <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember being with you at the uh, there was like that toy box store uh -huh. that we went to, and I was like looking around at all these places, and then yeah. like you had been in like one aisle, yeah. But I was like looking at all the shelves, yep. and then I came back around. And you're still there, like, yeah, look at this, look at all this stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, have you have you looked anywhere else? No, just no, look, look at all this. <laughs> what do you mean? What else? <laughs> all right, all right, yeah. But no, it is some really cool things, and I, I kind of do that, I guess, with uh, with Pokemon sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'm usually always looking for like the Bulbasaur, Venusaur stuff as yep. like my main things that I'm trying to find. Yeah. Because I'm like, I, I can't collect everything. Oh, there's so, so long. There's so much of it. I mean, there's but so much I've, of Star Wars. I mean, what I have of Star Wars is a percentage of what's out there. Mm -hmm. And mine's too much big, you know? Yeah, right. But, you know. I understand. Just the hunt is so, it feels so good. Mm -hmm. When you find that Bulbasaur, you don't have. Yeah. And it's reasonably priced. But look at this. <laughs> Like, it's that feeling you have when, like, you I've killed this deer and I shall eat it! You know? Yeah. Just the modern version of that. Yeah. Yeah, that was the place in Indianapolis that uh, we went to. Yes, yeah, so it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, it was a lot of fun, and they had Pokemon there that we looked at, too. And uh -huh. that's, then we went to somewhere else, and that's when I bought my other Pokemon decks, which was really yeah, cool. Yeah, that's right. It was on that same day. <clears throat> which, that's the sealed collection that mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Well, thank you, Eric, for sharing some of your collection with us. Thank you. And some of your new things. Yeah. Uh, maybe I, at some point we can like pull out some of the uh, your favorites in the collection. I'm, all, or I'm always getting the question of why don't you open? And I have a bunch of reasons. But I'm not insanely opposed to it, mm. to opening it up. Especially now that I'm older and more responsible and feel like I could catalog everything well. But it just, it'd be such a job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, if I just did nothing but open figures for a long time, I feel like it'd take me at least two days. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. And that's a lot. You just do yeah. an, like, you do one unboxing video day on Wave Squadron, yeah. being like, all right, here's what comes yep. in here, and here's, look at these figures, and you just show everything about uh -huh. it. <sighs> yeah. You know, my brother, when he was young, and he probably is the person that got me into this, he would open his toys, but like with an X Acto knife, mm. and then he would carefully put the package back together, and then like, put it in a bag and put it like under his bed. Like, I'll save this. It might be worth something someday. And I remember always thinking like, that's not how that works. You idiot. You opened it. You're, they're going to know. <laughs> no, I wish, I don't know whatever I did with them, but back when uh -huh. I was, uh, when I got Nintendo 64 games yeah. and Super Nintendo games, I would always open it. Mm -hmm. And then I'd, I'd uh, flatten the boxes and keep like the, the books inside. Sure. Because they would always come with like a little manual book and then the, the box. And mm. I'd, I think I would take out like, the cardboard inside that was holding like the game, yeah. But I would flatten the rest of it, and I put it. Yep. I put those boxes in a box. Sure. And I had all of them saved for like all of my life of like getting Super Nintendo and sixty four games. That's cool. But I have no idea where that box is. Uh, I don't know if I got rid of it. If my yeah. parents got rid of it. If we threw it in the trash. Okay. No idea. I would keep the boxes too, but I wouldn't flatten them. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah. Well, I'd put them on my shelf, and eventually they would tear apart and or cardboard. You know. Yeah. Well, there's like you know Golden Eye sixty four where it's like well mint in the box. It's worth this much. Yeah. Cartridge is worth this much, mm -hmm. but then there's like a little middle ground where it's like if you still just have the box, yeah, and the game and the manual, it, you know, it doesn't. It's not the mint price, but it's more. And I'm like, man, that's crazy. It's Definitely. like double the price of the cartridge. Just having the box sometimes. Yeah. But oh, <sighs> well, that was fun. <clears throat> yeah. No, thank you for sharing that. Um, You're welcome. That wasn't indulged to me at all. <laughs> <laughs>